Hello everyone, it's uh, Squeaker Wood HCG. Um, I just was going to come to you for a little bit today and see how everybody was doing. Please excuse this. Um, I had my massage today and um, went to the sauna, so that was a good thing. I really needed it today. It's been a little bit stressful. Um, I did have a goose egg today so I'm still at 13.5 and um, um, but I'll tell you the coolest thing is uh, I measured this morning because I try to measure on Mondays and um, I lost uh, I've, I've uh, lost 16 I think it's 16 even inches so that's pretty awesome I've lost four off of my chest and hopefully that's my back <laughs> four off my waist and four off my hips and two off my arm two off of my thigh so I guess if you measure both what would that be 20 inches if you did both legs so anyway so that's pretty cool and um, what did I eat today I had scrambled eggs and with the one egg and the three egg whites and I put spinach in it and you know I don't like it I think I'd rather just have meat. Um, I uh, have been reading Colin Watson's book uh, about whatever, loving yourself naked or whatever, and he talks about having uh, zucchini and a different, a couple of different kinds of vegetables. So I'm thinking about that as well. Um, today's been a little, um, a little stressful, like I said. Um, I've, I've mentioned before that my dad was diagnosed, actually this is my stepdad, was diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer and it's a cancer that's right above your stomach at the sphincter. So um, mom, my mother called today and said that they're going to start treatment. Uh, he's going to go in tomorrow for chemo uh, counseling and then Wednesday they're going to put in the portacath. Um, they're going to try to go out of town to visit some people before they start the treatment. And then Monday, I think, they're going to start treatment. So um, it's it's a quite, not a huge drive, about five hours or so from here. So uh, Sunday evening, I'm going to leave to go with them. I don't know how long I'll be gone. I'm thinking about taking my camera so I can keep up with everybody and, and um, share progress. Um, so anyway, I, I'm just waiting to hear uh, tomorrow what exactly they're going to do. I do know they're going to do chemo once a week and radiation five days a week. So um, hopefully that'll go well. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit, of, you know, I, I keep giving you all little pieces of story. So um, whenever I mention my dad, um, my real dad, my biological father, um, is from South America. He was born in Chile. He was he came to the United States right before I was born. Uh, he and my mother mar were married for eight years, at, and they were divorced whenever I was eight, because my brother was no, I was nine. My brother was a year old. And um, while they were married, he would sleep on the sofa. He he would drink all the time and. My mother, when she first started uh, getting doing drugs, she, it wasn't like she just ran out the street and grabbed, you know, some cocaine or heroin or whatever. She started taking diet pills, and most everyone, my mother's age, knows what that means: is to have black mollies and all of that. She found out that she could go to different doctors, and then she could sell them, and that's how that's how her drug addiction started. And so. Um, my dad was absent all of all of my life and he would uh, he never did anything while they were married but whatever he, after he married my stepmother um, my mother like I said was married about seven times but he was married to the same woman but I did not know before that that um, he had always cheated on my mother with my stepmother and uh, like I said she was 54 when she died so I mean, she was relatively young whenever whenever that relationship started. So, um, I mentioned about my stepmother being so mean, so ugly, and and you know, I think she had a really hard life. I think she was abused and neglected, and 
like a lot of us, you know, she had a past of sexual, mental, physical, verbal abuse, everything that you can withstand, I think she was there. So, you know, I, I do understand that. It doesn't excuse what she did by any means, but I understand. So, uh, my stepmother dies, and you know, I, you, you think, I don't know if you you guys do that, but I, you think, oh, well, that's just been a couple of years. It might have been four years ago, because I'm thinking it's been somewhere about between three and four, because about a year, maybe, I, I lose track of time. After my stepmother died, my dad, I have to back up and say that whenever I was growing up, my dad would, um, if if him if my stepmother left or she got mad or she was mad at me, my dad would come lay in the bed with me, and that was my biological father would come lay in the bed, and he never um, went to the extent that he could have, but he touched inappropriately. I never said that to anyone. I never I never told my mom. I never told anybody because I felt like that you know the shame of that. So, now, forward, my stepmother dies. Um, I see my dad off and on. It's not a huge, great relationship, but it is what it is. My dad is a, kind of a distant person. He just, he'd drink and work and do his stuff, and that was, that was about the extent of it. So, he, um, my brother asked him if he could watch my nephew and my niece. Well, so he did. I didn't know anything about it. And uh, the one night, my brother called and he said my niece needed to talk to me. So I said okay. So I got on the phone and she was crying and crying and crying. And uh, I said, "What is wrong?" And she said, "Grandpa touched me." So, my dad inappropriately touched my niece. And he probably inappropriately touched my sister, my half-sisters, and I have two of them. So, I don't know how long he's been inappropriately touching people. It's embarrassing, but, you know, it's not my life, it's his. And so, um, my brother said, what am I supposed to do? And I said, well, and he the only thing I can tell you that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to call the police and you're going to have to turn him in. Now, I do prison ministry. I do, I've done CASA, BACA. I've done everything to do uh, with abused children. And um, long story short, my dad is now in prison. He's been there several years. I don't even know how many. And um, I'm very ashamed to say that. Um, He's not had one visitor, including myself, my sisters. Um, I do send him money, um, not a lot. I send him enough to get by because um, I ride him. But I want to. This is this is my point today. Is that we all make mistakes. We all do things wrong. I'm not the judge. God never appointed me to be the judge. I write him and stay in contact with him because I feel like that he's paying for his mistake. Do I think it's right? No. Would I want that for anyone? No. Do I want him around my niece? No. But I feel in my heart that God's grace, God's mercy, and His love for me through all my mistakes and all of my failures, that's where I have freedom to live and to go on. And so I believe for myself that I have to have grace and mercy for other people. And so I'm a little nervous because he's coming up for parole and um, he said if he can't go stay with my sister, which it's 
she lives in his house, then he'll have to come live with me. I don't want that. Now, I said I love, you know, I love him with what I what I can, but do I don't know, you know, I, I don't want him to live with me. And I feel guilty about that. But I, I feel that if anything were to happen to my stepdad, my mother battles um, a diabetic retinopathy, so she can see at times, and at times she can't. So I have to take care of my mother, and um, it just, that, that would not work. So anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit today, and then that's what came to my mind, so I thought I would share it with you. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Um, I need to finish drinking my water, and um, I said that I probably would never try the Chocolate Delight. Oh my gosh, girlfriends. I made Chocolate Delight last night. Not before last year, was it? Whatever, you know, I can't remember anything. And um, I put uh, Heavy Dobby, I, I've mentioned it before, the Capella, C A P E L L A S, uh, drops. They're not sweetened, you have to put stevia with them. But I got toasted almond and coconut, and I put those drops in it, and I only made a tablespoon, and you know. Oh, it was delicious, but I, I, I'm afraid, I don't know that I can do that every day because I have thought about that all day. I have obsessed with it all day. I need to make some. I need to make some. I need to make some. I don't know that that's any good for me. So I need to stick with the program. I'm, I don't want to have any Dolls. I, I do that enough with point two, point two, point two, zero, zero, and then lose 2.2. Release 2.2. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I did get some more tea today also. I got some, um, it's the Republic of Tea, and I got strawberry chocolate. They have strawberry chocolate, that red velvet chocolate, peppermint chocolate, banana chocolate, all these chocolate chocolates, and they're made with red tea. I don't know how to say it. It's like Rubios, Rubos, something like that is what it's made out of. So anyway, I've gone 12 minutes, so I will go. I appreciate all your comments. I've enjoyed watching everybody. I've been really busy um, today, so I haven't had a chance to watch everybody, but I hope you're all having good releases, and I hope you have a good evening. The Biggest Loser comes on. It's my favorite show. It's so encouraging. So anyway, love you guys. Talk to you later.